Hi there, Obik here. In this video, we will be creating a timeline with CSS and JavaScript. So, let me show you its features one by one. The first feature that I am going to show is uh, as I scroll to the timeline section for large screens, it starts animating smoothly and uh, slowly. Right, and for the small screen, as I scroll by, wait a second, let me rephrase this page. So, as I scroll by, the animation starts smoothly, but as I scroll, the timeline progresses. Right, so I will scroll and then it will progress. And it is a vertical timeline. Now, this timeline is clickable, as you can see. I can click this timeline and it also happens with large screens as well. I can click this timeline and it will work like this. Right. Also it is highly responsive. So let me show you the responsiveness. So for very large screens, it is still responsive and for very small screens too. First of all, I will create one HTML file, one CSS file and two JS files. So inside the HTML file, I will create a section with the class name of timeline. Then I will create a div with the class name of timeline line. And inside that I will create a span with the timeline inner line uh, class and back to timeline section, I will create a UL and some LI tags inside the UL. Each LI should have a span with the timeline point. And I'm also adding a span with the class name of date and a p with content, but these are just optional. I'll link the CSS and add script tags for two JS files. And that is it for HTML for now. Inside the CSS, I will give some base styles, then I will give some spacing to the timeline. Since this is a horizontal timeline, so I will give the you will flex display now. And each li should will have a position of relative because the timeline point will go absolute. The timeline point will be 15 by 15 pixels and also have a white off white background initially. Left will be 40% and transition will be 1.5 seconds each. Top will be a hard coded value of minus 40 pixels because without this hard coding, the point won't align correctly with the line. And I want animation with the p text, so some transform, opacity, and padding for looking nice. Uh, also, the date span should will have some animation position absolute to make the date go above the timeline. The timeline line D will also have an off white background, some height 100% width to take the entire space of the timeline section, and a position of relative for the inner line to go absolute positioning. The timeline inner line uh, span will ha have a position of absolute, as I said earlier. Top and left will be 0% and initially width will also be 0%. Same height as the parent and I will also throw some transition as well. Also we will uh, give justify content center and align item center to make our make sure our timeline stays as responsive even on very large. So we are done with our timelines HTML and CSS for now. So let's add more HTML above our timeline so that we can scroll to our timeline section and only then will our timeline animate slowly from start to end. So inside this crawlanim.js, I will get the timeline inner line using the query selector and also get all the timeline URL I li tags uh, is assigned to the timeline events variable. Let's also create a new intersection observer which inside which we will pass a callback and an empty object. The callback will take entries observers as params and for each entry we will check the entry is intersecting or not. Only if yes then we will show time. For now I will do nothing. Uh, then outside of the intersection observer we will use our observer to observe target which is the timeline level. So back inside the if loop for each timeline event, we will call showtime function and increase the timeline width to 100%. Inside the showtime uh, function, what we will do is set attribute done true to uh, HTML and uh, I will show you why we need that later. So we will need the, uh, get the timeline point of the tag and change the background. You can do any other animation 
and then animate other stuff like date and content. Also figured out that the line style width equal to 100% should be outside the for loop. Let's see it in action now. Alright, our animation now starts only when our timeline comes into the viewport or screen. Now we will make our timeline clickable. I mean when we click each timeline point, if the timeline point is active, that is it shows the event date and then it will hide that as well as it will hide all the timeline events after this point. And if it is inactive, then it will show the event and date and all the events which are before this point. So to do that, first of all, I will create a new function hide time which does exactly the opposite of show time that is hides the timeline event then for each timeline event we will add a click listener and check if the event that is this li tag has done attribute or not if it has done attribute that means it is already active so when we click a active timeline point or event then we will calculate the timeline's progress or width by dividing the current index by total events to get a width just before the timeline point clicked right so also we want to hide this event and all the events that come after this event we will hide uh, use hide time function to hide all those li tags whose index is actually greater than or equal to the li tag that is clicked else if it does not has done attribute that means it, it is an inactive event or point so when we click an inactive point then we will calculate the timeline's progress or width by dividing the current index plus one by total events to get a width just after the timeline point clicked we will also want to show the, all the points before this point and this point so we will use show time function to show all these those li tags whose index is lesser than or equal to the li tag clicked so let's see it in action so if you click on 2010 you can see all the points after 2010 that is 2015 and 2020 and 2010 itself are hidden then as i press 2010 it appears then as I press 2020, then 2015 and 2020 both are visible again. So it's working as desired. To give a finishing touch to the horizontal timeline, I will show the timeline animation when we scroll to the timeline section. First of all, I will delete this uh, code over here because of the inside uh, of for loop, set timeout does not work as desired. So we will use a different approach. I will initialize a variable i equal to 0 and then I will create a function slow loop. Inside this function I will have a set timeout of 800 milliseconds and inside that I will call the show time and I will pass the timeline event at the i position. For example, timeline event at 0, at 1, at 4 etc. Right. Then I will set the progress or width of the timeline by dividing the current index plus 1 by total events to get a width just after the timeline point at the i position in timeline events then i will have this i plus plus so to increment the value of i by one so i will che also check if i is less than timeline events dot length then we will call this function again recursively otherwise we won't and the function would be done so inside the condi if condition we will call slow loop let's see it in action Let me refresh and you can see as I scroll to the timeline only then it animates smoothly. Now we will make it responsive. So we will go to the CSS and create a media query mean width of 728 pixels and that means all the skin whose size is greater than 728 pixel for them we will display the style below so we will copy all this still timeline and then paste it here so for the timing we don't need this here for here also we don't need all these only thing we need is flex direction and that will be row Uh, and here also we have we will have flex direction and that will be column so now why column is, is so that we can have them as vertical top-down approach right 
position relative we don't need it here and also we don't need this width 100% right now we don't need it here also we will delete this for now what we will do is remove this padding here and to here and here we will make this uh, 25 pixels for overall spacing in the mobile skins also one more thing for date we don't need all these as they are already presented there and shortly we will modify these as well for the timeline we don't need all these we don't need these either and look this looks perfect but here instead of width 0% we will have height 0% and width will be 4 pixels and here also we will change that for mobile screens height will be nothing and width will be 4 pixel the timeline will it line will take the height of the timeline section and the timeline section will get its height from the ul and here we will have the height of 4 pixels this we don't need and also we don't need this the timeline point we do not need this now we need this height and width and uh, the top and left as well and transition also we don't uh, need and here inside this timeline point width and height will be 8 pixels each now here comes the point why is timeline here then the timeline should be ha should have a display of block so that ul and timeline line can be vertically aligned and here we will have a display of grid now i could have used flexbox but centering elements felt a bit hard to me so i'm going with grid grid template columns will be 40 percent and auto so 40 percent will be taken by the timeline line and rest will be taken by the ul the inside this timeline line i will have this justify self as end and here we will have justify content as center to make things look better now only thing remaining is timeline point we will have a top 30 pixels and it will be minus 6 pixels and here date we will also have at the top 30 pixel left will be minus 68 pixels let me show you how it looks and it looks responsive for small screens and it, or it also looks for, for large screens it looks responsive as well so now all we have to do is to make this javascript responsive so for that i will create a timeline progress and now inside this timeline progress i will just copy this thing here here instead of i plus one i will have all values here now inside this value i can pass such as i plus one or here you can see index plus one or index and divided by timeline events dot length multiplied by 100 remains constant now we will run a condition to check if the window match media inside this inverted quotes will have uh, our media query and note these brackets here then dot matches it is necessary because it returns a, a boolean value whether our screen viewport window matches the media query or not if it matches then we will set the width progress for large screens we want to change the width progress as timeline is horizontal and height will be constant 4 pixels otherwise we will set the height's progress and width will be constant now instead of this uh, we need to uh, write timeline progress i plus one here also we do the same thing here i will pass index and here i will pass index plus one so let's see it in action for large screen it looks like this and for small screen it looks like this so let me refresh and you can see it looks absolutely right but you can see whenever we are resizing we have to refresh this page to make the timeline work responsibly why is that so let me explain this that is because we do not have any resize event listener so now inside the ui.js i will create a variable with the name do it i will add event listener for resize events and then the first thing i will do is clear timeout, timeout do it and why we are doing this that is because we will now set do it equal to set timeout and why we need this set timeout clear or timeout let me show you so instead of this if i do something like console.log then i go here and you can see that initially there were no there are no console logs but as soon as i start resizing you can see how many times this console log happens that means if i call a function here on resizing it will be called this many times which will be a mess for us in this case of timeline progress so we want to change our timeline progress after 
only after resizing has ended. So for that we need this clear timeout and set timeout. So inside this set timeout I will call resize end function 1.2 seconds later. After 1.2 seconds of resize completion I will create a function resize end and there it will uh, it won't take any parameters and inside the function I will first set i equal to 0 and then I will call slow loop. Why i to be 0? Now remember we set here i equal to 0 and then we are incrementing uh, uh, i by 1 so that means after the first call to slow loop when the page loads I will have some value of for i then if we, without setting it back to 0 we call slow loop our function will get error because timeline events array will run out of index so let's check it so in it, initially it is having this vertical approach then I resize and after a stop we can see it automatically changes progress without refreshing the page. So you can see it is working fine. Last thing remaining is for mobile devices we want this timeline to progress as we scroll. First, let's create another variable i2 which will be required for timeline progress. I will move the target variable above and rename it to target1. Create target2 which will be all li elements. Inside intersection observer instead of entry dot is intersecting we will use entry dot intersection ratio greater than 0.9 so that when the entry dot target has almost completely come into the view then we will do something there we will check our breakpoint and for desktop screens we will do what we initially were doing that is call slow loop but for mobile screens instead of using slow loop uh, calling slow loop we will use show time there we will pass the entry dot target then call timeline progress with i2 and actually I should be here um, initial I should here initial is uh, with i2 with 1 because we want timeline to progress just after the timeline point in that entry dot target right then outside the breakpoint check we will unobserve our entry dot target to avoid further complicated and undesirable behavior here we will have our threshold and root margin because this worked for me better than without it. You can play with the root margin now. These are required to ensure that the entry dot target has almost completely come into the view. Then again we will break, uh, check, breakpoint check and observe target 1 or all the elements in target 2 according to the desktop screen or mobile screen. So here you can see as I scroll timeline is progressing. Finally you can get all the code as well as an interactive demo of this timeline in this code pen and I have linked this in below in the comments. Thank you for watching this video and to all my subscribers thank you for supporting.